Okay, uh, this is video number four about Quartz Composer, and um, if you've watched the other videos, you know about the interface, how to start Quartz Composer, what the different types of patches are, how to show some stuff on the screen, and the way the coordinate system works. Uh, and the last one, I threw a lot at you with math and uh, showing you the difference between sprites and billboards. Um, how to figure out the, what the height should be based on the aspect ratio. If that didn't uh, catch on, you could, you could always watch that video again. This one is actually pretty easy. And in fact, we'll, we'll avoid all the math part of figuring out the height, and we'll just use the billboard, which figures out the height based on uh, whatever the width is. So let's, um, let's try again, and uh, we'll use this uh, baby, for example, as, a, uh, as an image input to... Uh, to my billboard. There it is, filling up the screen horizontally, not necessarily vertically, because uh, the aspect ratio of that image just doesn't happen to be 4 by 3. And in fact, if I do 16 by 9, uh, it seems to fit better. I don't know, it looks like it's cutting something off, but uh, you know, it depends. Yeah, it's cutting off, right? So by making it a uh, width of 2, uh, the only way I could get it to fit in here perfectly is if that original image happened to also be 16 by 9. But uh, that's how we show an image. That's a JPEG. Uh, I can also show a, a PNG. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll just Command D. I'll duplicate this billboard so I can show you that we'd show we can show both of them at once. Now this is a PNG, which has a, a PNG this PNG with a transparent background, so you can see that the car shows up on top of the baby. And um, this is where maybe we can see how these layers work. So uh, if we change the layer of the baby and and I should mention this too you can double click on any of these and rename them so I can call that baby I haven't lost the fact that this is a billboard because it still says billboard right underneath it you see it adds that in when I change the name so you don't get confused uh, and I can call this one car uh, so if I change baby to be layer 3 now the car goes away because the car is underneath it and that should make sense if you've ever used uh, Photoshop or uh, Illustrator or something. So now it's back on top. That's just that any of these blue uh, consumer patches they that render to the screen have this number for their layer as the at the end. If you uh, just got a black screen, you might wonder if somehow clear ended up being the top layer, which would be a problem, right? Um, okay, so that's that's how we can show more than one image. Maybe uh, instead of showing the car, I will show. Uh, a video and that's very easy we just drag a video over and uh, there an image shows up uh, sorry a, vid a video is basically just a sequence of images so there's an image output and we can add that to uh, the image input of this billboard I've lost the the baby because this is filling up the whole screen but I could make this half scale and now we see uh, there's there was the video uh, it didn't loop, and if I look here, oh, it did loop. All right, well, I guess the loop's by default. But I don't have a lot of control over this. What if I didn't want it to loop? Uh, if I go to the patch inspector, I have uh, under the settings panel, I have this asynchronous mode, which actually provides more inputs that allow us more control. And the main thing it does is it allows audio playback. So we don't hear the Nyan Cat uh, song. If I check this off, now we do. And we've got a lot more options. So um, just so you know, that's how we can uh, display video. And then um, if you want to play sound, I would recommend the easiest way to do it is to open that sound file, an MP3 or a WAV file in QuickTime Player and export it as a movie. Uh, and when it's a QuickTime movie, it comes in just like any other movie. And we can connect that image to some output um, some consumer like a billboard or a sprite, and uh, there's no sound, but we know how to fix that now. We go to the settings, and we hit asynchronous mode. So now that's playing the sound. And uh, if we wanted to, um, for example, have uh, every time you press the uh, up arrow, it resets that, uh, we could let me just stop this so we don't have to hear the music while we're doing it. But I'll click on the movie and go to settings, make it asynchronous. And I can say anytime I hit the up arrow, it should reset the movie. Let's try that. Up arrow, up arrow, up arrow. Okay. So um, 
that just shows you that you can uh, load uh, images, images with transparency, movies, and sounds. Uh, if I can show you one last thing, which is, uh, let's use a sprite this time, just to switch things up, and uh, let's use, uh, let's show some text. So there's um, something called image with string, and I can, uh, there's some default text, I think, hello world, as usual, and I can take that image and put it on my sprite. Get this running again, there it is. It looks weird, it's obviously the wrong uh, height and width, but we can take the display width and the display height and just use that. So there it is. Um, I could resize this by maybe dividing each of these by two or multiplying them by two. That's one way to do it. There's tons of ways to make this change in size. Uh, I can also just change probably, well, yeah, I think that's probably the easiest way. But um, I can also take a look at the patch inspector and I'll see that I can, under the settings panel, change the font without knowing the name of it because if you look on the first one, you kind of have to know the name of the font to just change it here and we don't necessarily know the name of the font. So by going to the settings page, we can actually change change the name, uh, change the font by selecting it. Um, I think that's probably good. I don't know if this yeah, that doesn't seem to matter here. Um, okay, so that's, that's how you show text. And uh, so now we know how to show text, images, video, and uh, audio.